Well, hello everyone. I'm Pastor Steve Herring, State and Supply Pastor at the Nahala Presbyterian Church in Scotland Neck, North Carolina, Cobb Memorial in Tarboro, North Carolina, and the Pine Tops Presbyterian Church in Pine Tops, North Carolina. This is the last Sunday in May, and uh, we are uh, getting ready to celebrate Pentecost, which I'll be talking about in a little bit, discuss Pentecost as well in the Bible study that I uploaded on Wednesday. Pentecost is the considered to be the birthday of the church. It is considered to be the time in which we Christians observe the meaning of the gift of the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to start us off in this service with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for this opportunity to celebrate the gift of your Spirit. We thank you for Pentecost. We thank you for the knowledge, the awareness, the understanding that you are with us and in us and your power surrounds us in every moment. As we prepare to observe Pentecost, Lord, we just ask you that you would spare us and save us from any negativity, that you would lift our spirits, help us in the spirit to rise above and to transcend all of the many difficulties, the illnesses, the fears, the anger, the division, whatever could separate us from you, whatever could separate us from one another. So we ask the blessings of your spirit in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, I brought uh, a little object to share with you today, which I'm going to do first. Um, a little chotsky. Uh, I'm going to take this up where we can see it a little bit better. This is uh, uh, a statue of King Tut. This little statue was sold at the gift shop at the King Tut exhibition, which toured this country back in the 80s. So it's just a little Chotsky made in China, little reproduction of an older statue that represents Tut, Pharaoh of Egypt. Now, I wanted to share this with you because I wanted a representation of an idol. And this is an idol. Okay? An idol. So I'm going to take him back, put him on our little table here. Now, idolatry is the worship of idols. It is the idea that, that this would be our Lord. That would be idolatry. Now in ancient Egypt, there was worship of the Pharaoh, uh, as there was also in uh, Rome. There was emperor worship. The idea that this all-powerful person was uh, was related to the, to the gods and that this person had all wisdom and power and authority the idol now we know that the idol the idol uh, is not God. The idol represents the God. And all through the ancient world, there were 
statues and representations of divinities, uh, gods of various sorts. There were, uh, this was a very common thing in all the neighbors of the Hebrew people, the Babylonians and the Egyptians had many gods and they had many representations of gods. And so did the Greeks in later years and so did the Romans in the time of Jesus have many, many representations of different gods. Now today, today, we need to think a little bit about what are our gods? What, what represents the objects of our worship? And I am going to suggest to you today that the objects of our worship are our opinions. That we live in an age not where uh, there are images of worship in temples of various gods, but where we practice the idolatry of opinion, the idolatry of opinion. Now, uh, before I get into the idolatry of opinion, I am next going to read several scriptures to you. And the first is a, a scripture that uh, I read during the Bible study that we uploaded on Wednesday. Uh, and this is from Isaiah chapter 61, where the prophet says the following. This is Isaiah 61, 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good tidings to the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant to those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. That's from Isaiah 61. Now, uh, we have previously read that when Jesus came, to his hometown, to Nazareth, he went into the synagogue and he chose that scripture uh, and then delivered what is uh, often referred to as the shortest sermon of all, uh, where Jesus simply said, today, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Um, let's do the, uh, let's read the, the Pentecost story. This is the story of Pentecost uh, from the second chapter of Acts. Now remember, Pentecost is the ancient Jewish festival of the giving of the five books of Moses, the giving of the Pentateuch. It was a well-established festival of celebration where people came from all over uh, the Roman world to uh, worship and to attend. Acts chapter 2, verse 1. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly a sound came from heaven like the rush of a mighty wind, and it filled the house where they were sitting. And there appeared to them tongues as of fire distributed and resting on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout people 
from every nation under heaven. At this sound, the multitude came together, and they were bewildered because each one of them heard them speaking in his own language, and they were amazed and wondered, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? How is it that we hear each of us in our own language? Parthians and Medes, Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians, we hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed saying to one another, what does this mean? But others, mocking, said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It is only the third hour of the day. This is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days it shall be, God declares that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions, and your old men dream dreams. Yea, on my men servants and my maid servants in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I shall show wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great the day of the Lord comes, the great and manifest day. And it shall be that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Then I have one more reading for you. And this is the reading, this reading I really, really want to encourage you to uh, keep a strong focus on. In all that has happened in the news in the last week, and all the terrible things that we have witnessed transpiring in cities all over the country, if I could possibly share one word, one message in, in that context, it would be from this scripture. And this scripture is from James, and this is James chapter 1, starting with verse 19. James 1, 19. Know this, my beloved brethren, let everyone be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger, for the anger of humanity does not work the righteousness of God. Therefore put away all uh, filthiness and rank growth of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. The anger of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Um, the world does not need our anger, and our anger has precious little effect, even though circumstances may provoke us, may cause us to feel angry, in various ways. As I said a little earlier, this is the age of the idolatry of opinion. Uh, we live in a world where everybody has uh, the opportunity to uh, gather certain information and on the basis of that information to form their opinions about what is going on around them. Okay. Whose opinions of all the people out there, whose opinions 
our best. Mine. Mine. Why mine? Because they're mine. And my opinions have to be best. And, and, and what I, I need you to understand that all over this country, people of all persuasions on the left and on the right, African American and, and white, Anglo, Christian and non Christian, everywhere. Everywhere, everywhere, people are gravitating to the sacred God of their opinion. Now, the way it works is that uh, we form our opinions. We form our opinions, and then where do we look for information, and how do we look for information, and how do we receive information regarding our opinions? What we do is we look for and receive information that validates our opinions, you see. So I reach an opinion, and, and so I reach an opinion, I go online, I look at the news, I read the news, I study the news, I, I, I follow the news, and, and the parts of it that really sink into my head are the parts that validate. So if I see something that I disagree with in some way and the opinions being professed in that place don't agree with my opinions, then I just don't, you know, just go to another channel. Find the channel that endorses my opinion. And what that means is that my opinions get stronger and stronger and bigger and, and more powerful until my opinions become the idol. We even have a name for that. We call it confirmation bias. Confirmation bias. It's a form of bias where the only things we really listen to and the only things we really accept are the information that reinforces our opinion that we've already formed. So you're going to go hang out. But join an association. Oh, yeah. Let's join an association. Right? And, and, and we'll get ourselves an association and we'll join our association. And who's going to be in our association? The people in our association are going to be the people who share the same opinion that we do. You see? So then what happens to our opinions? They get stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. And we end up creating the idolatry of opinion. Now, it is extremely important for us to understand this phenomenon because our opinions are not correct. Whoa, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, wait, stop. Stop, stop. Stop, stop. I just said what? I said, what? Well, let me correct myself. Your opinions are not correct. My opinions are correct, right? Right? Because why are mine correct? Because they're mine. See? You see how we mess up? We, 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 we get into this notion, you know, that, 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 that these are right and these are wrong. See, none of us, none of us, human beings, is capable of forming an opinion that is universally correct. And, and to illustrate this, let, let, let's say I can bring uh, that, that, that two people are looking at that wall back there. I'm, in, I'm preaching today from the Nahala Church in Scotland Neck, or just south, a few miles south of Scotland Neck, North Carolina. Let's say that we got uh, three people, and, and three people stood here uh, up in front of the church here and looked at the back wall. And you ask them, what do you see? Well, I see a wall, I see a wall, I see a wall. Okay, yeah, but no, what do you see? What are you looking at? What do you see? Well, I'm looking at the spot on the wall. I, I, you see the spot? 
Do you, do you see a spot on the wall? Okay. What spot? I don't see a spot. I see a crack. I don't see a spot and I don't see a crack. I see shadows. You guys, you see, you see how that works? We, we don't see the same thing. We don't hear the same thing. That, that there are all manner of differences in what we see and what we hear and what we understand. This is the nature of human perception. This is the way we see. This is the way we hear. We hear different things and we see different things. And the things themselves are, 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 are completely different. Let, let me give you another example. Let's take a uh, let's take a stop sign. A stop sign at an intersection. Um, a busy intersection in Tarboro, North Carolina, a stop sign. Uh, as you're driving up to the intersection, a stop sign is on the right there. It is, it is a stop sign. And what does it mean. It means you're driving, you're in this lane, you're looking at this side, you stop, look, and then go. Everybody's good with that, right? Yeah, that's a stop sign. Okay, everybody understands what I'm talking about. Stop sign is a stop sign. But what happens if we take that stop sign into a different context? What happens if we take it away from the intersection and we put it in the middle of the woods? So you're out hunting and and, 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 and working your way through the brambles and the bushes and, and, and the swamp and working your way back into the woods and getting back in there and you see the stop sign. The meaning is different according to the context. If we put the stop sign on a rocket ship and sent the rocket ship to Mars and took the stop sign out of the rocket ship and just stuck it up in the middle of uh, uh, one of those things on places on Mars, well, it wouldn't mean anything other than that some idiot put a stop sign up in Mars. The, the meaning of things is contextual. It has all to do with when we see what we see, where we hear what we hear. Everything for us works and shifts and changes with the context, right? And that includes us. And so my context, background, experience, where I've been, what I've done, the way I look at the world, my life experience is one thing, and therefore when I look at the wall, I see it a certain way. The guy next to me has come from a different place, has different lived experience, has gone in different directions, and sees things differently, and therefore doesn't see the spot on the wall that I saw. And so likewise with the third person, with whomever. Different people, different contexts, different experiences, different perspectives, different ways of seeing the world. Now I'm going to submit to you today that the only way that we can avoid destroying one another over the idolatry of our opinions is if we can accept and understand that we are all the children of God and blessed with the gift of the Holy Spirit of God. If we, going back to the, uh, to the scripture from Isaiah, going back to the scripture from Isaiah, chapter 61, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Take that word deep into your heart. Speak those words. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me.
because he has anointed me to bring good tidings to the afflicted and to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, opening of the prison to those who are bound. Quite simply, if we allow ourselves to languish in the idolatry of our opinions, the idolatry of our opinions will become our prison because we will be literally unable to understand the larger world and the larger universe outside the narrow little slit of our narrow little mind and our narrow little bunch of opinions. We've got to get out and understand the glory and the grandeur and the greatness and the, the, the universality of the word that speaks to us, bringing us the power of the children of God. You see, we have a great responsibility because the world we choose to see is the world we choose to see. The world we believe in is the world we believe in. If we believe in the negativity, the negativity will become our reality. And so, uh, going to the, uh, to the scripture from Acts is, is such a, a wonderful story from Acts chapter 2. And whenever I read this, I always read the list of the names of the places, you know. In the, in the lectionary, they often skip that little passage because it's a lot of syllables, you know. The Parthians and Medes and Elamites and Residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, etc. Uh, it's a map of the, of the world of ancient Rome. Interestingly, it does not go any further west than Italy. And that is uh, a sign of the antiquity of this, that, that this is first century. This is, this is uh, the time of Jesus, right? Uh, or say around 35 CE, around the year 35 after Jesus was born, right after he, he died, right after the, uh, the crucifixion, resurrection of Jesus. Uh, and uh, and, and, and there, there's really nobody coming from Britannia, or, or, or Spain or Gaul from the western part of the empire. But they are coming from everywhere else, and they're coming to Jerusalem, and they're all these different people, different people, different context, different people, different culture, different people, different language. And, 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 and this fantastic story is about communicating the mighty works of God through all the different social and political and racial and cultural differences that exist. That's what this is about. It's not about us being the greatest ones and us being separate from everybody else. This is about the world. And it's about the universal power of the Spirit of God. And, and, and it really is an amazing and powerful Scripture And I love verse 21. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Fantastic. The, the idea here is that we, in, in our individual separate cultures and contexts, are the children of God and the possessors of the Spirit of God and the possessors of the power of God. And that lets us validate. What that lets us do is communicate with one another in such a way that we can say to the person we're in conversation with, I understand where you are coming from. I hear you. I validate your opinion. I validate your opinion. This is my opinion. But my opinion is, is very faulty because my perception is very faulty because I don't really see the world the way the world really is. I see the world the way I think the world is. I 
see the world the way these eyes communicate to this brain and the way this little brain goes and, and kind of tells me things are. And therefore, my opinions have to be disposable. Okay? My opinions have to be like Dixie Cups. But what I have to do is validate the course. I have to hear you. I have to honor you. I have to love you. Because that's the commandment of God. And that is our responsibility. And finally, uh, the, the, this fantastic scripture from the book of James. James knew what it was to be, to be in the warfare of the idolatry of opinions. Um, James stayed in the Jewish faith after the resurrection of Jesus. James, in all likelihood, was the brother of Jesus. He was a devout Jew. We, we, we know this from a very good description of James that Eusebius, the first church historian, wrote about James and other sources regarding um, James, called James the Righteous, or James the Just, or the Crowned One, um, and various ways of describing this amazing um, uh, apostle, this brother of Jesus, and, 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 and he is writing this right at the edge of the, of the Jewish war. He, he is writing this at a time following the resurrection of Jesus when, there, when the, the, the animosity between the Romans uh, and the Jews, the animosity between the Pharisees and the Essenes, the animosity of all the political and religious factions that were happening in Jerusalem were reaching a total crisis point. And James says this, Let everyone be quick to hear, chapter 4. 
So that is the implanted word. And that implanted word is a word of peace. It is a word of justice. It is a word of unity. Pray for peace. Pray for justice. Pray for unity. It is able to save our souls. Amen. Now, please, uh, if you if you uh, have benefited from this, uh, 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 put a little thumbs up there on YouTube. Uh, send me an email. Let me know. Uh, please uh, 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 email me. Let me know what's uh, what's going on in your life and how you are doing. Special thanks uh, to Mr. Winslow for fixing the pulpit here. Uh, Tom, thank you. Uh, Paramets, uh, right color. Everything good. Church here in Nehawa is looking great. And uh, uh, I thank you for your continued patience as we are waiting for uh, the time to be right for us to uh, resume our regular worship. Uh, not too much longer. Just be patient. Just be patient. Just be patient. Um, my email, S at edgecomb.edu. My phone number, 252-888. Seven five four one blessings, blessings to you all.